Hi everyone, Jason Schenker here, President of Prestige Economics and Chairman of the Futurist Institute. I wanted to share with you my initial reactions to the February 2024 U.S. Jobs Report. Known formally as the Monthly Employment Situation Report, this includes changes in monthly non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate. It's one of the most important economic indicators of the month because it impacts financial markets, it can impact Fed policy expectations, and it also often sets the cadence for what we might see in other economic indicators in the month ahead. And that's because it comes at the beginning of the month. The February jobs report was better than expected for non-farm payrolls, which added 275,000 jobs, but worse than expected for the unemployment rate, which increased to 3.9% from 3.7%. Additionally, on the downside, there were also downward revisions to monthly non-farm payrolls for December and January, which totaled 167,000. So going into February, there were actually 167,000 fewer jobs than we thought there were. So that 275 is not as good as it might otherwise seem. That makes this report a bit mixed. Yes, there was an above consensus number of jobs added, but there were significant downward revisions and there was a rise in the unemployment rate. If we look at the rest of the labor market, what else is going on? Well, very few people are collecting unemployment. Only 1.9 million people file for continuing jobless claims in the latest report. We look at the number of open jobs and the JOLTS data for January 2024, the latest we have, showed there are 8.9 million open jobs. So with 8.9 million open jobs and only 1.9 million people collecting unemployment, we know that there are 7 million more open jobs than there are people collecting unemployment right now. That's a very hot job market. Additionally, the 1.9 million people collecting unemployment is only about 1.1% of the labor force. That's a lot smaller than the 3.9% unemployment rate reported in the monthly situation report. So what happened and why is there a difference? The 1.1% represents the number of people collecting unemployment. That's based on reports from the Department of Labor. But the 3.9% unemployment rate is based on household survey data in the U.S. jobs report. As we try to reconcile these two numbers, the biggest thing I try to point out here is that 3.9% is a very low unemployment rate and that the number of people collecting unemployment is exceptionally low and there are lots of open jobs. To touch on one more subject, tech layoffs have gotten a lot of attention lately. In this cycle, it looks like they peaked in Q1 of 2023 and they've been falling since. Although, so far in Q1 2024, they've increased to the highest level since Q1 2023, although they're still a lot lower than the layoff figures for the tech industry in Q1 of 23. As the Fed looks at these things, how are they thinking about it? Well, their top priority right now still remains inflation. The Fed has a 2% inflation target, and we are not there yet. This was reiterated by Fed Chair Powell in his semi-annual testimony before Congress in March 2024. And we know the Fed wants to get that inflation number down. They're not likely to cut interest rates until we're a lot closer to 2%. And as long as the job market remains on solid footing, which all the data does seem to point to, I wouldn't expect a change in the target of when we're going to see Fed rate cuts we don't expect a Fed rate cut until Q3 of 2024, although it is possible a rate cut could happen in June of 2024 if there is significant progress on inflation. Follow for more.